Hey, hi. Um, are we feeding Valeria's argument that the Keystone Pipeline is harmful to the environment? And to back herself up, she uses three claims. One, the Keystone Pipeline is, extended and is extremely prone to accidents. Two, accidents from pipeline spills cause significant environmental damage. Three, the Keystone Pipelines have already caused significant damage in Canada, which, uh, which may foreshadow the United States' future regarding pipelines, pipeline harms. So in response, I'm going to argue that the Keystone Pipeline um, is not harmful to the environment. And my first claim is that pipeline transportation for oil is safer than expected to be better for the environment than any alternative, which is usually uh, rail transport. Um, so after a Fraser Institute study, which used direct information through government sources, it concluded that both the rail and pipelines are quite safe, and pipelines are without the doubt the safest way to transport um, oil and gas. They stated in every year from 2003 to 2013, pipelines experienced fewer occurrences per million barrels of oil, equivalent transported than did rail. This means that rail is more than 4.5 times more likely to experience an occurrence. To add to that, uh, there's more risk of an oil spill from rail transportation than there would be from a pipeline. So objecting the pipeline because of potential harm um, to lake and water simply uh, ignores the reality. And according to this, Association of Oil Pipelines and uh, the American Petroleum Institute they stated that um, oil travels more securely by pipeline, reaching its destination safely 99.99% of the time. In addition, most incidents do not impact the public or the environment, with 71% of the incidents in 2015 occurring and contained wholly within the operator's facility. My second claim is that the Keystone Pipeline is not worse for global warming, which uh, would therefore not causing a significant environmental damage. Um, Although extracting oil from Canadian oil sands does not require more energy, but does require more energy and requires 17% more greenhouse gas emissions from oil well to tailpipe than the <coughs> traditional barrel of oil refined in the United States, the use of pipelines actually decreases the amount of greenhouse gases from being emitted into our atmosphere. A March 2013 analysis by the State Department concluded that the oil sands are likely to be developed regardless of whether the pipeline is approved and it said shipping the oil by rail to existing oil pipelines or to oil tankers would, re would release more greenhouse gases than shipping the oil via pipelines from Canada to the Gulf Coast refineries. And to further my point, pipelines will reduce the number of spills compared to transportation by trucks or rails from North Dakota and ultimately lowers the amount of carbon footprint emitted from um, the other options of transporting oil. According to an article by Procon.org, which is a leading source of information for controversial issues, it asserted that uh, transferring oil by pipeline is less likely to result in spills or accidents. Avoiding incidents like the May 2015 derailment of train carrying crude oil that resulted in the fiery crash and forced the evacuation of a North Dakota town. Pipelines reduce transportation costs by five, five to ten dollars per barrel of oil and have a lower carbon footprint than trains or trucks. My third claim uh, is uh, countering the arguer's claim that the ecological dangers from the pipeline in Canada may foreshadow the future disasters within the U.S. Uh, fails to disclose the fact that pipeline companies in the U.S. are more technologically advanced to avoid such disasters. So, uh, spills from pipelines in the U.S. are rare, but when they do occur, they are more controlled or backed up by containment protocols and the, and the Transport Tra Transportation Safety Board. Uh, in the same study by Fraser Institute, states that considered that 73% of pipeline occurrences result in spills of less than one meter, and 16% of occurrences result in no spill whatsoever. The vast majority of pipeline occurrences, more than 80%, also don't occur in the actual line pipe. Rather, they happen in facilities that are more likely to have secondary containment mechanisms and procedures. Also, the U.S. has a deeper concern for safety um, of the pipelines and the industry is not stopping to proactive and is proact proactively working to achieve its goal of zero act incidents. And I mentioned in the website in Pipeline 101, a section states, over the last several years, the number of large pipeline incidents has decreased markedly. Pipeline incidents per mile larger than 500 barrels are down 32% from 2011 to 2015, while the number of incidents 50 barrels or larger per mile are down 12% during the same years. In conclusion, 
in both Canada and the United States, the rise of consumption surrounding the use of products that require oil and natural gas productions also increase the need of expansion regarding their transportation uh, capacities and deficiencies. The Keystone Pipeline extensions are the most beneficial choice both economically and environmentally. Thank you. All right, well, the, the main issue that I think that you get to in your argument is that the oil is going to be developed one way or the other. So regardless of what the transportation system is, that's going to happen. If that is, in fact, the case, which I think you make a good argument that it's going to be the case, then the question becomes, which is the safest, least environmentally problematic mode of transportation? And you, you definitely talk about why the pipelines are superior to the alternative. Now, the advocate never talked about those alternative methods of transportation so I think that's one of the things that you sort of want to emphasize and suggest that look the advocates perspective on this is a little bit narrow and it misses the key issue here so that we know why it is that your perspective is the more valuable one and then uh, I thought that you did a good job talking about how the pipelines are safer than rail or um, uh, transportation by truck, uh, you had good information on that. There's not really any discussion of the advocates' evidence on any of these points or their own reasoning. Everything is counterclaim, and you've got good counterclaims on these points. I think there's nice information that tries to diminish the significance of uh, the spills, that they happen in particular contexts, that they're relatively small, that in the context in which they do happen, uh, there's likely to be uh, additional containment elements that's going that are going on. So I I think that, like I said, you have a good variety of counterclaims on those points uh, without necessarily confronting some of the um, evidence that the advocate's presenting directly. Uh, you do have answers there. I do think, though, that uh, sometimes you need to look at the issue that's being presented here. We're getting mostly counterclaims, and I think for the most part they are uh, mutually exclusive, but uh, in a debate, for instance, when the uh, arguments are uh, being directly presented immediately beforehand, it's a little bit easier to contrast that, and since uh, you know, since there would be a response, I would assume that uh, that would be a little bit of an issue. But I, I like the source citations that you gave. I like the statistical information that you had, and I thought there was a pretty good explanation of the position that you were taking. I do think, though, that you need to look up once in a while and stop reading so much to us and explain these concepts. Uh, that's a tendency that a lot of people have here. You're not going to have that ability to do that in the uh, debates when they come along. 